Lesson 9.4, Graphing Sine and Cosine Functions. Our essential question, how do you explore characteristics, stretch and shrink, translate and reflect graphs of sine and cosine functions? Standard 9.4, number one, graphing sine functions. So we have a table and a graph of our sine. A few things that I want to point out to you in regards to the graph. You will see that it has a range from negative one to one. It will always go as high as a positive one and as low as negative one. It is stuck between positive one and negative one. The entire graph is. We have some vocabulary terms that you need to be familiar with. The word amplitude tells us how high we are from the middle of the graph to the high value. So our amplitude would be right here, the middle up to the top. Right here, our middle up to the top. So our amplitude is what the half is of our entire range. So amplitude is this half, this half, could be this half as well. Amplitude is how high it is from the middle point to the top. I also want you to observe your x values. So we have an x-intercept here, x-intercept here, x-intercept, x-intercept, x-intercept. Remember our x-intercept are at the whole pi values. The last term that you need to see is the word period. Period is how long is this until it repeats. Our repeat starts here, and our repeat will continue until it gets to that point again, which is right here. So this one segment is the segment that's repeated. Starts at the zero, up, down, I stop. That is the repeated segment. Since it went from two to two pi, our period says that our function has a period that lasts two pi. A repeat is every two pi long. And then we have a list of characteristics that we had just read over. Your domain. Domain is how far to the left and how far to the right this goes. We said that it went without bounds. So it goes forever to the left and forever to the right, oscillating between a range of negative one and one. That's what we had highlighted above in red. It bounces between negative one and one the entire time, going all the way to the left and all the way to the right. Your amplitude, which we did in green, says it's one half the distance of the maximum value and the minimum value. So it's half of the distance of the range. Your period was what we had done in blue. Your period is how long it takes to repeat. And then our x-intercepts we had done in yellow. Your sine x-intercepts are at the whole pi values. When we are graphing our sine, you need to be familiar with the variable that's in front of the word sine. That A is going to represent our vertical stretch and our vertical shrink. You should already be familiar with this because this is what we did when we were in chapters one and two. So please remember chapter one and chapter two. This was an outside multiply. We remember that our outside multiplies are our vertical stretches and shrinks. Well, this right here is going to be our inside multiply. And remember, our inside multiplies were our horizontal stretches and shrinks. So this was your inside multiply. Remember, it's multiplied by the reciprocal. There are some equations you are gonna have to remember. The A that's in front of the sign is gonna help you find your amplitude. Remember, amplitude is how high it is off of its middle point. The B that is stuck to the X, that B is gonna help us the period. The period is how often it repeats. You also have five key points that you need to make sure that you are familiar with. First, you need your x-intercepts. Notice sine has three x-intercepts. So key point one, key point two, key point three. Your x-intercepts are zero, zero, this formula, and this formula. Those are our three key points. You then have key point number four, which is going to be your max. And your max is this formula. And key point number five is this one right here, and he is your min. And that is this formula right here. You need to have all five of these formulas because they're going to tell us how to graph these.